Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here, and we're doing another Swiss Fate Reforged draft. Rare looks pretty good to me. Four mana, two, three. It's a warrior. Beginning of your instep, you get to bolster. Definitely a good card. Let's see what this guy does. Four mana, three, two, prow. Oh yeah, I remember that one. This guy you can bring back from your graveyard if you can draw black or green. That's right. Um, yeah. Good rare. So let's first pick this Dragon Scale General and see where we go from here. I'd like to make a Warrior deck again if possible, but we don't have to. But this is certainly a good start to it. I mean, you don't even have to play an aggressive deck with this card. This card is just really strong. I love that the General doesn't have to be tapped for you to get that Bolster X. Just you can attack with whatever creatures are convenient for you and then still trigger the bolster x so it's pretty nice certainly a powerful card all right i definitely like elite scale guard as a follow-up pick let's see if there's what's this ghastly conscription exile creature cards from target players graveyard to face down pile shuffle it then manifest Jeez. wait oh well let me see if that's worth anything all right apparently it's not worth much of anything which is surprising because it seems like a pretty good card but i mean it's depend it's seven mana it's dependent on them having but it's like a brand new mythic. I guess that's why I'm surprised it's not worth that much. But yeah, I think it's just an easy elite scale guard here. This card is fantastic. So awesome follow-up pick. Not a warrior, however. Jeez, and we get the light form. Well, I made the mistake the first time, but I'm not going to make it this time. Awesome card. And I would say even better when you've got a uh, couple dudes that uh, bolster. Certainly good with lifelink. So let's just snap this one up. Passing some good cards, but similarly getting really good cards here. All right, I can take the Bathe and Dragonfire. I do like the Destructor Dragon, but if I take the Bathe and Dragonfire, I can still go Jeskai or Mardu. Um, if I take the Destructor Dragon, I have to do Abzan, which is probably fine, but if, I want, if I'm Abzan, I almost would prefer to... Uh, Go more of a black-white route, just because of the Lord effects and cheaper creatures. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fine pay, taking the Bathe and Dragonfire here. I mean, I would I would venture to say that it is, in fact, weaker than Destructor Dragon. I mean, I also could take the Abzan Advantage, which is cool. But uh, Bathe and Dragonfire just seems a little bit better, since it kills things at a relatively conservative price. And uh, keeps me more open to multiple archetypes, yeah. I'm just going to take the fine removal in Bathe and Dragonfire. Okay. Uh, options here. Probably the Vault Breaker. Seems like a fine follow-up pick. Pretty good card in general. There is Ugin's Construct. But uh, I don't need to take that. There's uh, Gorswine, which is also fine. But I think Vault Breaker is better than Gorswine. I mean, granted, you have to pay the extra mana, but it is a looter effect, and you can potentially dash it, which I like, so let's take that. And what do we have now? Sage's Reverie. We do have Light Form. Um, probably just take the War Flare. There is Fierce Invocation, actually, which is a fine card. It's at least a 4-4. Four -four. It's not bad. Uh, I could take Dowson Gloom, which is a card I like. Um, probably not the best card if it's on the splash, but it's not necessarily on the splash either. It also moves me into Mardu right away. I do like War Flare. It's going to be better with tokens, but in general, it's a pretty fine combat trick. And Fierce Invocation, I haven't gotten a chance to play yet. I think I'm going to take the War Flare. I'm not sure if that's right. Hero's Blade, what does this do? Plus three, plus two, whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach Hero's Blade to it. Isn't this card just good in general, though? Even if I don't have two mana to cast, which admittedly isn't fantastic, but um, Naya is not really a thing, and Jeskai is a thing, so Whisk Away is an option. 
I'm going to take this Hero's Blade. Granted, I don't have any Legends yet, but I feel like plus three, plus two is a pretty significant creature boost. I guess we shall see. All right, here I think I'm just going to take Soul Summons. Uh, Smolder, it's better than Smoldering Efreet, so there is that. Also, there's a second War Flare, which kind of makes me wish I'd taken the five drop Manifest card, but that's all right. Take Soul Summons pretty happily. All right, Mystics. I like it. Certainly the best one here. We don't have... Well, we do have Light Form that we can return. All right. I like that. That's enough value for me. A Prowess card that's like Gravedigger cost. Not quite as good as Gravedigger in this deck already, but we could find some more enchantments. Otherwise, I take Tranquil Cove, which sets me up for Jeskai. Which isn't a horrible idea, to be honest. But I'm going to take the Lotus Eye Mystics. I want to give that card a try. Okay. Uh, that's a late map to waste. That's an interesting one. Uh, Dragon Rage. Yeah. It's interesting. Probably fine with tokens. But I guess Lightning Shrieker is probably pretty good. Lava Axe style effect, sort of. None of these cards are super amazing. Um, yeah, I don't really need anything, really. But black's going late, so maybe that's the best option. I guess the rune mark could be good. I don't know. Oops, waited too long. Uh, let's take the Abzan advantage here. Not that it's particularly amazing, but I do like having access to it, at least at a sideboard, and there's nothing else really. I don't really need a second Shrieker. Not that there's anything wrong with that card, I just don't think it's amazing. Uh, Rugged Highlands seems fine. If I wanted to splash for a green pick, maybe. Second Abzan advantage, okay. Probably don't need two of those. I will grant you that. But we'll leave it in for now. All right. I would say it was a pretty successful pack one. We got some pretty powerful cards, actually. Uh, Jeskai Charm could be a reason to go Jeskai, definitely. Um, there is Feet of Resistance, however, which is also a fantastic card. Might even be better with, like, the Dragon Scale General and the Elite Scale Guard. Well, I guess it's not... Well, it protects the General. That is a good thing. Works better with the Mystics, but Jeskai Charm is pretty powerful. I think we take the charm. I, I do like the feat, but I think I'm ready to commit to Jeskai over a charm because Jeskai charm is one of the better ones too. Um, very just very good abilities. The lifelink one can bring you right back into the game. And I do think feat of resistance is a fantastic card, but it's first pick. So you've got some tough choices and I don't think either card's going to wheel. So I'm willing to commit for a powerful charm effect. All right, Burn Away is probably the pick. There is a Suspension Field, too, which is cheaper. A little bit less versatile, but much cheaper. It also turns off the Sultai ideas. Someone, a few people mentioned how I should have uh, picked Trail of Mystery over uh, Sidisi in that one draft. I disagree with that, but I will say that I should have at least uh, mentioned how good Trail of Mystery was in the deck, which I didn't establish or, or really even identify at the time. So, um one of those things where you called me out properly for not addressing the card, but I don't regret the pick uh, in retrospect because Sidisi is still really good and worth five tickets. So it turned out to be the right pick anyway. Suspension Field versus Burn Away. This is really interesting. Suspension Field is much cheaper. I feel like we got all the Abzan advantages. Uh, Burn Away, I mean, they probably deal with a lot of the same stuff, but Suspension Field does it a lot more cheaply. Uh, I'm going to take the Suspension Veil. I don't know if that's right. Ponyback Brigade, but I think we're in Jeskai territory here. So if we're in Jeskai territory, probably the Student. There is also Windscarred Crag and Timely Horde Mate, I guess. But uh, let's, let's probably take the Student, I think. I mean, I could just take the Windscarred Crag. It's probably better than the Student. But if we're going to be Jeskai, I want... Prowess cards.
All right. Horde Chief is pretty reasonable. There is a rush of battle, but Horde Chief is usually pretty amazing. And especially good alongside the Dragon Scale General, I'm sure, for attacking purposes. There is Leaping Master as well, but we look like we're primarily white at the moment. It's also a War Shrieker, which is pretty good. But I think a Horde Chief's probably better, so we'll take that. Jeez, that's a good uh, Abzan card. Um... Anything here I care about? Not so much. Guess we take the Tormenting Voice. It's pretty good with Prowess. Not amazing, but it's certainly a playable card. I don't really like Singing Bell Strike all that much, and certainly not if Blue's our lightest color, which I think it is. All right, let's just take the Tormenting Voice here, which is fine. Bloodfire Expert, another good Prowess card. There's also Aerostorm, which is good. Winter Flame, which is good. But I think we're, we're going to take the Expert here. I'd like to get some more Prowess going. Let's put the Vault Breaker over here, too. All right. So I can take the Rush of Battle. Uh, Barrage of Boulders works well alongside Expert and Vault Breaker. Um, and Lotus Eye Mystics, for that matter. Hmm. Not really Lightning Shrieker so much. Barrage of Boulders might be the pick. There is Rush of Battle, however. We do have War Flare already, but how many Warriors do we have? We, we actually don't have that many Warriors. Um, there's also Salt Road Patrol, which is fine. I think I'm going to take the Barrage. I don't mind having it. I think it's actually pretty good in our deck. All right, Student Number 2 or Bring Low. I think I'm going to take the second Student. We probably have enough stuff already that's going to work well with it. Like, even these Abzan advantages are pretty awesome with it. Double boost out of nowhere. Granted, it's... Not, I probably still like Defiant Strike more, but getting a permanent buff is certainly something you shouldn't overlook. All right, none of this really matters all that much to us. I think I just take the most annoying card, which is likely the Skull Hunter or... I guess Skullhunter has the most synergies with, like, a warrior build. Embodiment's a good card, too, though. I do like Embodiment of Spring. All right. So we don't have any fixing yet, but we only have one blue spell, too, which is interesting. Um, I mean, I'm trying, I guess, to do dedicated uh, prowess deck, but I don't think we're in bad shape. We have good removal. We have a good creature count. I think we're going to need some more creatures, though. Um, keep in mind, Soul Summons is a creature, too. So we really have, like, 10 creatures, 11 creatures with light form. So 11 creatures currently, which is a pretty good count. Um, second Barrage of Boulders. Doesn't really feel necessary. Kind of wish I'd taken that whatever card I was, it was up against now. Now that I know I can get one. Uh, Crippling Chills, probably fine. Not terribly exciting on the splash, but I'm not entirely convinced we're going to need a second Barrage of Boulders either. Well, War Shrieker is certainly a fine pickup. War Shrieker number two, yeah. There's a quiet contemplation, but War Shriekers are just good, so I'll take them. All right, take the Erase for the sideboard. Take the Banner. All right, so one pack left to go. We have more than enough playables. So at this point, we can take pretty much blue fixing over anything. Um, but we just have two blue cards currently. Maybe we are playing a two-color deck. I pretty seldom do that. But I guess one huge pro of that is uh, um, you can make your you can play 17 lands, I would think, really easily with a two-color deck, but you miss out on multicolor good cards like Just Sky Charm. I, we have to take the Creator's Claws here. Here's, here's. We have uh, four power dudes, so there's really just no reason to not play Creator's Claws. And even if I didn't have four power dudes, it's still a burn effect, which is already rare and limited. Let's cut the Lightning Shrieker. Not that I have any problem with it too much, but I'm not super interested in it, I guess. All right, here I guess I just take the Tranquil Cove. The foil one, of course. Uh, I mean, I'd like to make the blue cards. Just Sky Charm is certainly good enough where I'd, I'd want to pick it here. And we could use some more creatures still. We have 12. 
with our uh, manifest cards. So I'd like some more, if at all possible, but Tranquil Cove is certainly fine. All right, Leaping Master. There's also a Misfire Weaver. I mean, Weaver's a better card than Master. And there's a Wind Scout, too. Um, certainly a creature. Misfire Weaver might be the easiest to play because I can always morph it if I don't have my blue mana. And unmorphing it to protect something is quite good. Uh, what am I cutting for it, though? Probably the Tormenting Voice. Play the Misfire Weaver. I mean, we top out at a relatively low cost here. Misfire Weaver's better with Double War Shrieker, too, I think. I do like the Wind Scout, though, but let's take the, the Weaver. We could probably get away with 17 lands still. All right. I like the Watcher of the Roost. There's also Bring Low and Force Away. I do like Force Away, but we still have a fairly low creature count, and Watcher of the Roost having flying is pretty nice. Um... What do I cut for that? I still want to try this Hero Blade out. Is this card not good? I feel like it is good. I mean, granted, you got to pay four mana to equip it, which is pricey. But plus three, plus two is a pretty big change in body size. Uh, let's cut the Crippling Chill, I think, for now. Take this Watcher of the Roost. More flyers. All right. I think it's a pretty easy Swiftwater Cliffs here. Um, I mean, I like the Leaping Master. We have 14 creatures currently. Let's just take the Fixing. We have multiple foil fixers. That's kind of cool, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, this deck looks good like this. 14 creatures. 23 cards. Top out at 5. Crater's Claws. I mean, however much mana you can get for it. I'm probably still fine cutting one of these Abzan advantages, but we'll see if I have to. I could upgrade it pretty easily, I'm sure. Is this Hero's Blade not good is the real question. I mean, I don't have any legendary creatures to get value with it, but I still feel as though it might be good enough. All right, I can do Dragon Grip, which is fine. Maybe I just want the Defiant Strike for the students, and I run that. O I I think I'd rather run that over Abzan Advantage, just for the draw card. And the. I mean, it's debatable which one's better, but let's just diversify. I think. Let's see if that works better for us. I'm definitely curious to see if Hero's Blade plays well for us, or if it's. Not that good, but I don't know. I have a good feeling about it. There's not a lot of uh, equipment in this full block, I don't think so. Having it seems pretty good. There's a Salt Road Patrol. There's Disdainful Stroke. I don't think we need the 7 drop, especially if we're doing 17 lands. Stubborn Denial's fine. Um... Salt Road Patrol, we probably have enough four drops already. Maybe we just take the Stroke or the Stubborn Denial for sideboards. Stroke or Stubborn Denial, that is a good question. I think we'll do the Stroke. I think there's more opportunities to use Stroke than Stubborn Denial since it hits. I don't know which one hits more targets, honestly. This is more limited casting cost-wise, and this is limited uh, type of spell-wise, so I really don't know which one's better. All right, I think we slam the Treasure Cruise. And uh, there's a pretty good chance we play it. Have to figure out over what yet, but usually you play the Treasure Cruise. And I think we can make trades early enough where that's not going to be an issue. Um, so maybe we cut the Barrage. How many cards do I have total that work well with Barrage? I don't think I have as many as I would like. I can take Valley Dasher here. It's a fine card, not amazing. Probably don't need it, but lets us put on a pace, I guess. Some matches where it's not going to be very good. I probably don't even need it. I guess we 
board it or maybe play it but likely not play it um yeah i guess we'll have to see all right i don't think we need the fire of calvary but it is in our main colors i guess i'll take it anyway none of those other cards really matter all that much although i guess naturalize sort of deals with light form but not even in a really debilitating way all right, Dragon Grip came back. I mean, it certainly seems like a fine card in our deck. But I don't think I like it more than the Abzan Advantage. And I don't think I can make Cancel work in here. Yeah. I don't think the calories are all that good. A second Defiant Strike. Do I want to play Defiant Strikes over Abzan Advantage? I may actually do that. I don't know yet. I have not decided whether I'm going to do that. Abzan Advantage is probably better sideboard cards. I think I would rather draw a card and temporarily boost over not draw a card, pay an extra mana, and permanently boost one. So it's debatable. It really is debatable whether which one of those is better because I honestly don't know the answer. I think that's more of a preference thing and how your deck looks. And our deck looks fairly... How much How much prowess did we get? I guess we didn't get too terribly much, but we did get four, I think. Double student, expert, and mystics. It's not a bad amount. Um, our curve is low enough where I could easily get away with 17 lands, I think. We top out at, well, treasure cruise, but... I assume we're going to be putting stuff in our graveyard because these are creatures as well. So 14 creatures with soul summons and light form, which is fairly creature light, I guess. Maybe I cut a... Maybe I cut one of my Defiant Strikes for a Valley Dasher. Be a little bit more beat down. Just guy students aren't the best beat down creatures per se, but I probably can just get away with 14 creatures, I think, and all these cantrip spells. Good removal, good tricks, good finisher. Granted, we don't look hyper aggressive, but. Still kind of want to try this Hero's Blade out. I know I keep saying it, but it's because I've never played it before. I mean, it turns Student into, what, a 4-5? That's a pretty good body. Turns Light Form into a 5-4. That's also a pretty good body. 5-4 Flying Lifelink. Yeah, it's pretty strong. This thing's a 5-3. Yeah, I mean, gives my evasive guys some pretty good power. Doesn't really interact all that well with the Dragon Scale General and the Elite Scale Guard, both of which are going to work better, I guess, with the Abzan Advantages. So that's some synergy. Well, the, the Scale Guard is going to work better with the Abzan Advantages, but I think I'd still rather draw a card. Trigger Prowess a little bit easier. Certainly debatable. Um, how many things can I play off the War Shrieker? I can play Watcher. Can't do it like this. Misfire Weaver, an expert, and Horde Chief. All right, so there is uh, a decent amount of spells I can play. Three, four spells off of War Shrieker, or seven if you include the students and the soul summons, which I guess you technically can. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is this, is this how I should run it? Probably. I don't have any legends for Hero's Blade. Certainly something to keep in mind about our deck is it too clunky i really don't know we're gonna find out um but i think i'm gonna run the deck like this um we're not super color intensive besides the just guy charm and the light form we don't really have any double color spells so we just err towards uh white of course and then next is red and then we probably just need two more sources of blue to make the three cards work. Yeah, it's probably fine. Let's bring in the 
foil white source, of course. Three foil lands, very nice. All right, so this would be uh, 10 sources of white. I think we're going to lower that. This is the four sources of blue. And then we have six sources of red. No, I think we got to go eight sources white, seven sources red, four sources blue. It's probably fine. I might be able to get away with six sources of red. If you look at the curve of the deck, we don't really need, we pretty much just need to make sure that we hit white early and then have red at some point. But our early plays are almost all white, which kind of makes me want to run maybe nine sources white, six sources, six sources red. So this would be nine, so seven, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, yeah. Nine sources white, four sources blue, six sources red. I think that, that actually probably works pretty well. Because like I said, we, we basically just have to make sure we hit our white early for our, our cheapest plays. So uh, I think our mana, our mana could definitely have some issues with this deck as well. But overall, I, I do like this deck. I think it looks pretty fun. Got some good, uh, powerful effects, good rare to try out that I'm kind of excited to see in action. Uh, pretty good tricks, pretty good removal, some powerful spells in general, some good lifelink action going on. So, yes, we're going to run it like this. We're going to see what we can do. I think we don't have any really bomb creatures, but maybe Dragon Scale General sort of counts. Scale Guard is certainly a... Pretty powerful one. We don't have a ton of flyers either, which could pose an issue, but uh, I certainly think this deck is got potential to win a draft, so we're going to try it like this, and we'll have to see how it plays out for us. I'm certainly interested. All right, we'll see you round one.